Well, welcome back to Finance Uncut. On today's episode, silver below 20 bucks. I think it will struggle a little bit when it gets back to that level, but inevitably longer term, I still have this viewpoint that, you know, the Fed is talking more hawkishly. I'm sure we'll talk about that in a minute. You know, they're going to taper, but we all know that the Fed is in a box now where they can only do so much before they have to loosen monetary policy again to combat the next crisis, right? So so you're going to have this kind of slowdown in the economy, gold or silver comes in, maybe, maybe hiking of interest rates, which also causes the metals to usually sell off, but it's not going to last for long. So I would say look to accumulate. Yes, expect resistance at 20 on the way back up. But after some consolidation, I think it actually breaks through, goes to 30 and even 40 and 50 down the line. So what caused the silver price smash? Well, let's listen to the opinions of two very intelligent people that I follow. You know, I want to be fair. And, you know, people say, well, why did the market go up? More buyers than sellers, why did the market go down? More sellers and buyers. And then everyone wants a why. Well, it's because of interest rates or it's because the Fed's posturing or whatever. You could say that. Everyone wants to have a reason why. But the reason why is there's more buyers or more sellers. That's the reason. And to know the why, you'd have to go on a survey and individual every seller. And if you really got the truth out of it, the sellers were selling because they wanted the price to go down because the major selling, the bulk of it, the lion's share is all done through the basic bullion banking system. And that's the truth. Now, were there legitimate hedges in there? Absolutely, let me be fair. But was the bulk of the, sale? look, I mean, this is so common sense. You know it, I know it, but I'm on a roll. <laughs> I wanna continue. How many people that buy or own something want the lowest price possible? I mean, really, no one. But yet you get these smashes in the metals all the time. You get them in other commodities. And there's one reason for that. These short sellers have a vested interest in seeing the price go down. Because if you're short, you make money on the destruction of the price mechanism. And that's okay. I really think in a free market, you should have, you know, longs and shorts. The problem I have is it has no uh, tie to reality. In other words, if it was a fair market, you would only be allowed to hedge as a, as a mining company, uh, let's say one year's production, or maybe two at the most. But you wouldn't be able to be a bank that has nothing more than other people's metal for the most part. Let me be fair, they have their own, the retail market, or excuse me, the wholesale market does have some product, <clears throat> but you wouldn't be able to hedge more than you owned. You wouldn't be able to hedge uh, anything but what you had. You couldn't you know, take uh, any amount you want and, and call it a hedge when it's really a manipulation. So the conventional reason given for that, and I had a guest on my show, Louis T. Gray, explain this, is the jobs report. At the beginning of each month, you'll have the jobs report in terms of our overall unemployment number. One of the points that Lobo made was when you get a very positive job report or unexpectedly positive job report like we did the last week, last Friday, it tends to affect the currency markets and therefore gold. And I do agree with that. I do think the traders trade the currency pairs like the USD, pound, euro, USD, all of those based upon jobs reports. Because I used to work in the currency field for a currency broker, and, and that used to be one of the easiest trades to make every month is you trade the jobs report. So I do agree, and it does affect gold because in a short-term basis, the, the dollar and gold are correlated, meaning when the dollar goes up, gold goes down, vice versa. Not necessarily on a long-term basis, but short-term. So looking at the short-term, yes, that would have affected dollar to the upside because of more positive job growth, gold to the downside. The one issue I have with that argument, however, is that there are two things. One, there was a fade in gold leading up to the jobs report because I think everybody expected a positive jobs report. Why? There have been a lot of uh, headlines in the news talking about a shortage of qualified positions, meaning more open jobs than people available to fill them, especially in the educated uh, type jobs where you have to have some sort of degree. And so I think everybody expected there to be a more positive jobs report based upon that. And so you saw a fade in gold leading up to that jobs report last Friday. So that when you had that big smash down overnight all at once, it didn't make sense that some of that job support expectation hadn't been baked in. And further, why wouldn't you have seen it on Friday? Because the job support comes out early enough. 
in the day that you would have seen some of that trade on Friday. What we saw is it traded after hours for the U.S. market and in other markets, and it and it it was a precipitous smashdown. There was about a hundred dollar flash crash in the price of gold into the sixteen hundreds at one point before it started to rebound. Now it has rebounded as I'm looking at the the prices now on goldprice.org. Uh, we have gold trading at seventeen seventy seven and silver at twenty three seventy three. This has been a nice rebound the last couple of days. So I do think that the jobs report did affect gold and silver. I don't think it affected it as much as what we saw. And I think that there was a tremendous amount of paper in the derivative market, especially in, in the United States, dumped at that time. And it's a relatively thinner period in the market, and it doesn't, it doesn't coincide with the conventional wisdom. Thankfully, however, we've had a rebound. I think traders realized that even though we had a positive jobs report, overall, in terms of the overall labor force participation rate, we're still at about the same level, even a little bit less than during the last financial crisis, 2008, 2009. So we haven't really made a big recovery, even though we had a positive month. So I think traders putting things in perspective has, has led to the rebound in gold and silver this week. If you look at the gold and silver prices, they are down month over month. So at this point in July, gold was trading 1820 to 1830. Silver was between 26 and 26.5. They still have not recovered to their July prices. So they are still trading down. The traditional explanation for that is the summer doldrums, which is typically the slowest part of the gold trade in a silver trade. Doesn't really affect silver as much because it's more industrial. So I think that's kind of covered. I do think there's manipulation. I think it's obvious. The amount of paper that has been dumped, not only uh, overnight hours, Sunday, Monday, but that has been dumped in the last month has been extraordinary. It, it's many multiples of actual mine supply. And so you have to go back to understanding what this market is. The COMEX is a derivative market. It's paper, it's speculation, it's betting. And right now it's providing an opportunity for physical investors to get in a cheaper price. Because like I said, you got the love trade coming up. The next five to six months tend to be very positive for gold and silver historically. So I expect the prices to rise naturally. Even in the derivatives markets, they'll rise. So now is a buying opportunity. Um, but there will always be manipulation. The thing about manipulation is very short term. If you look at gold, gold has outproduced most of the major stock indexes since 2000. So even though manipulation has occurred, and I think it's pretty obvious when you look at the data, they can't stop the long-term price trend of gold. So what I tell people is don't get too wrapped up in these flash crashes and don't get too wrapped up when gold runs up 50, 60 bucks at a time. Look at the overall trend and follow that overall trend. So there's a couple of reasons why the price of silver was smashed. Now we'll cut to an updated chart of silver and look at what is going to drive silver up. And when we look at the most recent silver chart, you can see that we did actually break that $23 level, uh, but it didn't stay there for long at all. And we've now closed above 24. Uh, so there seems to be some strength here. So, you know, can silver fall below $20? Well, it can, but it seems to me that there's quite, quite a lot of strength uh, in the silver market at this price. But uh, let's have a look at someone else who also doesn't think that it'll go below $20. Yeah, I don't see sub $20 silver. I believe that $22 is, is far too cheap. We saw rejection on the last time it broke 23. So we've got to be right around that, that right price where people, um, you know, you, you get that bull bear line. I just, I don't see as much... Um, you know, opportunity for reward for someone to aggressively short sell silver below $23. It just does not make sense. Where when you get a massive price spike, you'll see short sellers come in, but not only them, but mining companies that want to forward hedge production will come in. It's advantageous for them as a company to short sell when you go north of say $30, $35 because it could smooth out their profitability over the long run. Well, demand will actually drive it to where it breaks the chains of manipulation. And uh, silver's interesting. I see it going increasing. Why? First of all, higher price will bring in more buyers and the algorithms. The algorithms that trade these markets synthetically will see a breakout and they'll buy the breakout. And then the public will come in and there's really, it's safe to buy at a new high, believe it or not, especially if it's a brand new, new high. In other words, let's just use 30 as an example, because silver hasn't been at 30 in a very, very long time. 
So once it hits 30 is a round number, <clears throat> the algorithms will go long and the public, you know, especially the trading mentality people, the guys that have computer screens, day traders or position traders, and they'll say, wow, 30. And they don't care that, you know, it used to be at 24 because they don't have any real tie to real money or all the principles that I teach about, you know, money and honest money and all of that. They care about one thing. Can they make currency or can't they? And so they have a very strong chance of making currency uh, at that level and riding it as long as it's able to be ridden. And that will cause more demand. And so some of that demand will be, you know, demand of people that really want to hold it. Or some people that will get into it for trade. will say, you know, I'm going to buy it at 30 and, you know, I plan to sell it at 40. But, you know, and all of a sudden, you know, it's at 45. And it's like, you know, I'm going to sell some or I'm going to hold on to it or whatever, change their mind. In other words, a lot of speculators become investors. <laughs> and there's a whole story behind that. I won't go into it. Because of the fact that, um, the number of fundamental uses, not only technologically, but also medically, continue to advance on silver. And the demand and the number of uses continues to outstrip supply. There's a major disconnect between where paper silver trades at and where physical silver trades at. And I believe that those two need to narrow. Um, like I said, that, um, you know, if you look at, silver that's held in exchange warehouses like something like the CME, there's a finite amount of it where there's a number of paper that's out there chasing that, chasing those prices. If people were to take delivery of all the silver that's held within the warehouses, you would see a shortage that's out there and the prices would naturally come back up, much like we see um, box beef cutout values and, and live cattle prices, they tend to narrow and come disconnected. I think silver um, needs to see that where prices come back up to the physical sense. And one of the best ways at draining these warehouses is through the Sprott Physical Silver Trust, the PSLV. It, it's probably, in my opinion, the cheapest way to invest in physical silver, uh, it's probably the easiest way uh, as, a, as a collective group in getting that physical silver out of the warehouses, um, taking delivery. And so if we really are going to see a silver squeeze, it's actually not going to be done, I believe, through uh, your local bullion dealers. It's going to be with uh, the... the Big players like uh, the Sprott Physical Silver Trust. But that's just my opinion. Uh, that's not financial advice. So Michael Burry is still predicting high inflation or hyperinflation. He hasn't retracted that hyperinflationary call. And now he's put his dollars where his mouth is. He is shorting US treasuries. He's shorting the dollar. Uh, and you only do that if you think there is going to be significant inflation. And when we look at this chart of the PCE, well, hasn't that broken out of a channel? So from an economic point of view, from the fundamentals macro point of view, uh, things are looking very good for gold and silver, not so much for fiat currencies. So I saw this on Twitter and I had to share it with you guys. Uh, so back in 2016, when gold was 1350, we had the uh, GDXJ was 50 bucks, yet fast forward to 2021, where gold is 1800 and the GDXJ is 40. So what does that tell you? Does that tell you that gold's overvalued or does that tell you that the GDXJ is undervalued? As a, a junior uh, investor myself in actual physical, oh, sorry, physical, in actual individual stocks, um, I can tell you that they are unloved at the moment and severely undervalued, severely undervalued. And, uh, and, and they have been wonderful buying opportunities. I shared in my last video with Sam that uh, the only real changes I've, I've done to my portfolio is simply add, especially to my uh, uh, Explorer and Junior positions. I like buying things when they're undervalued, when they're unloved, and I like selling things when they're overvalued and when the taxi drivers are giving you advice on what to buy. 
So I'll put a link in the description below to this video I did, how to become a silver millionaire. Just my story on how I've uh, had some success in this uh, sector, but also why I play the gold and silver miners and the explorers. And I'll also put a link in the description below to this video that I have done, uh, investing in gold, silver miners and explorers, where I just share my tips on how I value gold and silver uh, miners and explorers, the things that I look out for and, and why I do it, the exciting, like just the asymmetrical returns that I get on on this. And uh... All right, first on the list, we got to talk about those medals because the Godfather loves his medals. Demand in Germany for gold has been the highest since 2009. China's back in their digital yuan with gold. Russia's moving to gold. A Canadian pension fund just bought gold to hedge against inflation. What do you think is coming? Metals are coming, we know that. Everyone's asking me what metal is the best to buy. Obviously gold, but I like silver. I think there's better ROI if these prices get reset and silver gets used in tech. How much silver do we have? It's obviously gonna keep running out. Keep your eye on metals. Look at the metals, look at the gold peg to yuan, the euro, the dollar, it's all breaking out. Look at the charts, know your charts, buy some physical metal. Put it away. Inflation wary Germans are loading up on gold. Bullion dealers say demand remains strong on inflation hedge. Still, gold prices have been pressured by Fed taper concerns. Now, we are going to find out very soon where the Fed stands on that. I think we all know. Uh, but when the market realizes that, and I think the market is because we saw the good jobs number or so called good jobs number come out. Um, talk about tapering. Um, so the dollar has uh, improved from its bottom. Gold, silver got smashed. But gold and silver, uh, there was strong support for it. And we have seen it strengthen in recent days and, and close above some pretty significant uh, support levels. But is there any other big institutions? So we, Michael Burry's saying this, you know, we're seeing a lot of uh, billionaire investors and economists warning of inflation uh, but is there any big institutions buying gold or silver ontario teachers pension plan looks at commodities for hedge against inflation and in my next video i'm going to discuss what happens when large institutions and large investors start buying gold and silver because it's happened in the past and we've got some evidence for that and we are seeing a sign of it now and so stay tuned for that and we're going to go back in history and have a look at when warren buffett bought silver so what do you guys think do you think silver is heading back to 20 bucks do you think it can go below 20 bucks or have we seen the bottom in silver in this bull market anyway love to see your thoughts and opinions in the comments below don't forget to hit that like button guys we do appreciate that it definitely helps the algorithms and uh you know, if you haven't yet subscribed, do so. Hit that notification bell. Take care, and I'll see you all again on another episode of Finance Uncut.